We are continuing our discussion on the coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic. And with new case numbers starting to decline throughout the country, as well as here in Central Florida, this leaves many residents questioning what we should do next. Face masks are still required throughout many Central Florida communities, and more vaccine and testing sites are opening to accommodate the numbers. So what does all of this mean for you? Well, on this special edition of Healthy Connections, we're going to get an up-to-date look at where we are as a community dealing with this pandemic. Let's get an update from our state medical professionals and joining me is Alvina Chu, epidemiologist with the Florida Department of Health in Orange County. Alvina, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So Alvina, are we starting to see the positive impact of the 65 and plus uh, and older um, uh, Floridians who are already started to get the vaccine? Is, are, are those results of them being vaccinated starting to show up? I think we really are seeing this positive effect from the strong vaccination program that we had in our long-term care facilities and in the 65 plus population. We've looked at a comparison of death rates um, from the beginning part of the pandemic pre-vaccine to post-vaccine, and we have shown a significant uh, drop or decrease in those death rates and hospitalizations. It's really encouraging. And so we're looking forward to increasing vaccination in the rest of the population so that we can really get a handle on this pandemic. And here in Orange County uh, at the Orange County Convention Center only, um, they're dropping the age to 40. Um, do you think that's going to have a huge impact as well? I really do. And, you know, as I mentioned previously, we're, we're in this race right now between getting um, our community immunity built up to get a handle on pandemic before uh, the variants might come in and change things. And so we're optimistic with this move towards uh, the open eligibility for 40 those persons 40 years and older that we can get a greater proportion of our population vaccinated and thus increase that immunity. So Alvina, remind me how you can register for the vaccine. Certainly you can go to the CDR Pro Health website at www.patientportalfl.com to create an account. And then after you create that account, uh, you can select the dates for uh, an appointment to get the vaccine at the Orange County Convention Center. So for people who think that we're sort of rounding a corner now that people are becoming vaccinated, should we start to say this is the end of the pandemic or is it just too early? We are, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. How far that tunnel is, I'm not exactly sure yet, uh, but I don't want us to let up on our pandemic precautions on building up our community immunity through vaccinations. Uh, we still need to get a handle on the pandemic. Uh, the spread of infections continues. Uh, so that part we don't want to forget. And we still continue to have severe hospitalizations and deaths reported. And so until we can decrease those significantly across all parts of our population, um, I think we should still maintain um, our, our steadiness as far as protecting ourselves from this virus. Exactly. And also, uh, Dr. Pino on Monday at a news conference mentioned that we are actually uh, have a 97 percent COVID-19 recovery rate. Um, that's great news, but people still need to get vaccinated. Uh, yes, the 97% recovery rate is really great news. Um, it means that the severe hospitalizations and deaths percentages are small. However, uh, that's those are still impactful numbers, you know, anytime we have ho severe hospitalizations and deaths. The natural immunity from COVID infection um, it's, itself is unknown how long that lasts. And so we are encouraging people to still get the vaccine um, and complete the series whenever they get it um, to know that they are protected for sure from the severe hospitalizations and deaths. Now, um, one of the things that people are, are curious about is the variants that are um, a, a known to be in existence here in Florida. Um, does the vaccine that we have currently, does it protect against the variant or how well does it do so? 
So the studies are ongoing about um, the vaccine's effectiveness against the variants, and right now, as far as we know, that they are. But uh, the caveat, as we talked about previously, is the, vir the virus is constantly changing and evolving. And so we want to be able to get a handle on the pandemic while we have a good, effective vaccine before the virus um, accumulates enough genetic changes to confer some kind of advantage um, to it to evade either natural immunity or the immunity induced by vaccine. And in here in our community, we've had uh, both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines, and now we're getting the Johnson & Johnson. Is that um, something to be excited about and why? It certainly is. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a boon to us here. It's another tool in our toolbox in fighting this pandemic since it's a, one, it's a single dose um, vaccine. So uh, the mobility, um, so being able to get it into places where it might be difficult to have certain storage conditions or transportation conditions, um, that it's really going to help us be more mobile and agile in bringing the vaccine out to people. That's fantastic. Well, Alvina, thank you again for keeping us informed from the front lines of this pandemic. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back. Stay with us. As vaccination numbers increase across the country, there are still a lot of people who don't believe the vaccine is safe or effective. Well, Dr. Michael Howell is here and he's back to shed some light on this subject. Dr. Howell, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, thank you. So a lot of people hear about some of the vaccine side effects, Dr. Howell, and they think to themselves, is this gonna happen to me? Is this safe for me and my family? What do you tell them? Well, I guess I'd ask to answer the, the most important question first. Everything that we know about the COVID-19 vaccine at this point is, is the vaccine is safe. This vaccine is effective. It's effective in preventing significant illness, hospitalization, and even death. So uh, many are going to question, you know, well, we don't have long-term data at this point. And that's true. But the data is continually being reviewed and studied. And all across the globe, scientists are looking at every bit of information that they can on millions upon millions of individuals who are getting vaccinated. And so we are collecting great information. And what we've seen so far is that the vaccine is safe. Uh, we're not finding any major side effects. Uh, we have heard of some unusual circumstances over in Europe about some blood clots, but at the European um, uh, organization over there that looks at their vaccine studies have found out or decided, determined that the vaccine itself is not the cause for these blood clots and they put it back on the market to be used. The main side effects from the COVID-19 vaccine, you know, what we've talked about before, it's pain or at the injection site, a little headache that tends to go away after a day or so, mild chill, maybe some muscle achiness, and some people maybe even have a low-grade fever, but all this tends to go away. You can take a little acetaminophen, a little ibuprofen, if you will, take it after you get your vaccination, not before, and it should go away without any real problems. You know, one of the things fueling a lot of people's skepticism about the vaccine is how quickly it was developed and um, and people have been, you know, we expect a, a, a vaccine to take years to develop. So how can you explain to them that this system is, uh, some of the components were already in place and, and how this vaccine was developed? That's a really good question. You know, we heard about, um, warp speed at which the vaccine was going to be developed. And a lot of us were very afraid when we heard that because we didn't know really what that meant. What, it, what we found out that it meant in today's modern technology is that scientists around the world came together, they collaborated, they talked, they shared research, they looked at existing processes and said, you know, if there is a way for us to put all this together and create a vaccine, not from scratch this time, but from a known starting place, let's do that and apply that technology and science to what we're gonna be doing you know, for the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, that's what made us, uh, allowed us to be able to get there quickly. Um, the other things that were very important to getting there quickly was the fact that we removed a lot of the financial barriers that are usually in place when new drugs and new product, medical products come to market. So since we financed this on the front end because of the need, the urgency 
to get to a resolution sooner um, than later, we were able to move that hurdle out of the way. And then finally, we are this this coronavirus, this COVID-19 virus is not completely new to us. We had the template. We had used the template in other types of vaccines. Uh, we knew what we wanted to do. And so we actually applied the known knowledge. So we bypassed a lot of the starting steps and we would just start more than midway uh, in the development process. That's how we got it quickly and soon enough, uh, so much sooner than before. Finally, there have been many people, thousands, tens of thousands of people that lined up to um, be in the trials to see if the vaccine would work. And because of the amount of people we were able to test the vaccine on, we were able to find out what worked quickly, safely, and effectively in a very short time frame. And when the vaccines were being introduced initially, we were starting to hear a lot of percentages of effectiveness. Just how effective are these vaccines at helping to prevent the spread of COVID-19? Thus far, the three that we have in America have all been demonstrated to be very effective. Now you hear the term efficacy, it's really, it, it, but that word really means, does it do what it says that it's supposed to do? You've seen numbers of 85, 90% eff effectiveness or efficacy. At the end of the day, you need about 50 to 60%. And each of these vaccines does meet and exceed that particular benchmark. So it means that they are effective in taking care or providing the level of uh, response that's necessary to keep you safe should you become infected with the coronavirus or the COVID-19 uh, virus. Now, you've done some uh, research on, of course, the vaccines. Uh, how m much were uh, African-American, Latino-Americans used in the studies to make sure that all of the, the eff efficacies are the same across ethnicities? Well, let me give you a baseline first. When we look at many cancer drugs that are developed, we have less than 5% in many of the cancer drug treatment uh, studies. So that's your baseline. In this study, we had almost, and the, the FDA re reports say there were about 17.2% African Americans in this particular, in these studies for these vaccines. That's huge because we're what, 13, 13 and a half percent of the country as it is. So to have that number is huge. I'll tell you another statistic, you know, uh, um, although 62% of the, the study population was white, we also covered 3.5% of Af uh, American Indian or Native Alaskan. And the Hispanic involvement was also significant because um, out of all of his, the people who were in the study, uh, over 50% had origin as Hispanic or Latino. So we covered the major areas. The final point I'd make is when you look worldwide, you see that there are many countries with different ethnicities that are also taking the vaccine. So when you kind of look brown and black people, you see, we've been, you, we, we've been taking this vaccine. We were studied in many places and it has proved effective around the world in those populations. And Dr. Howell, if you were to project into the future, um, do you see these vaccines being able to protect us from um, the coronavirus for uh, significant periods of time um, and the variants that may come along as well? Or will we need a booster shot from time to time? Well, we really don't know how long the protection will last at this point because we only started vaccinating in December. Studies probably going on a little earlier. So we need a good year to see what's going on. What we do know is that if you have had corona, uh, COVID-19, you do develop some immunity. The vaccine increases the level of that immunity. We do know that so far, those who have been vaccinated have maintained their immunity, or you do see some lessening of that immunity if you just had the COVID infection itself. Will we these vaccines be effective in some of the variants, if you will, the variations of the virus? Right now, with the vaccines that we're using here in America, we are finding good coverage for those variants, if you will. And will we need a booster? Well, if you think about this vaccine and the flu vaccine, each year we are modifying that flu vaccine formula to take into account the variations of that flu virus. This may have the same process, may require the same amount of adjustment on an annual basis. May not be an annual, but right now we're wondering about that. So time will tell. We do know that variants are out there. We do know that this, vac this vaccine 
was made for a specific variant, if you will, of the virus. As the viruses change, we're going to have to adjust to them. May require a booster from year to year. We'll see, but that's news to come as we as we see what the studies look like. You know, Dr. Howe, we all have friends or family members who are, are just saying they're not going to get the vaccine. What is at stake if you choose not to get the vaccine? Let me paint you a picture of what can happen if you are vaccinated. If we get enough people vaccinated and we get enough immunity to be able to resist the devastating impact of this virus, we're going to be able to go back out in public with a lot of less hesitation than we have right now. We're going to be able to gather with our relatives and our loved ones, our families, our friends who've also been vaccinated and not have to go through some of the distancing that we would have had to do if we had not been vaccinated or the population had not been vaccinated. Our businesses are going to be able to come back online and, 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 and grow again. And we're going to get our economy back on a stable footing. Folks who are out of work can go back to work because businesses are booming again. And we're going to be able to go with the, the volume of need will be there. So getting the vaccination for the most part does put us back on track to resuming or returning to a degree of normalcy, if you will, that is, which is what we're looking for. Now, once you're vaccinated two weeks after you've been vaccinated, we would consider you, you know, pretty safe, if you will. Um, we would also tell you that you could then gather indoors uh, with folks without wearing a mask, but we're talking about gathering with one other group, not a whole group of folks without masks. It'll allow you to um, gather indoors with unvaccinated people from one other household without a mask, uh, unless they're high risk. The other things that we'll do once we're fully vaccinated is, yeah, we'll still want to go out and be wear health precautions. We're going to want to wear a mask in, in places where there are people who aren't wearing masks. We're going to want to continue with our hand hygiene. We're going to want to continue with some degree of, of distancing. It may not be the six feet that we're doing now, but things will slowly come back once we get to the point where our country, our society, our communities have a level of protection and we're not just passing this virus back and forth like we have been over the last year. And that makes it all worthwhile. Thank you so much, yes, Dr. Hall, for your information and, uh, and for your time and we appreciate uh, your input today. Thank you, have a great week. You too. And we'll be right back with more, stay with us. We've heard from a variety of leaders today trying to keep us informed about the coronavirus. From local government, the medical community who's on the front lines dealing with this pandemic, and organizations who continue to serve our community. And we are also here to help you keep making those healthy connections. Stay safe.